All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I've got a pretty exciting update for you. I, uh, I recently picked up a new motor for the port of boat, and it's right here. This is a five horsepower, four stroke Honda outboard short shaft. It needs a little bit of TLC and a couple parts that need replaced, but I picked it up for $300 on Craigslist, which I think is a pretty good deal. Um, in good working condition, these probably go somewhere between $500 and $1,000, depending on you know the overall condition and uh, how how it performs and how it looks and uh, if anything needs replaced but let me just walk you through the motor and I'll show you what I'm gonna replace the maintenance I'm gonna do on it before I take it out in the water for the first time all right so like I said this is the motor um, you'll notice a few things missing uh, especially uh, like the decals on the motor those must have fallen off at one point but overall just do a quick recap on the motor and how you use it Right here is the throttle. You twist this to go faster. This is your kill cord. Um, you need this in to start the motor and to turn off the motor you can either push this in and hold it or you can just take out this clip and it will stop the motor. These cords are pretty universal for uh, most motors. I don't know if this is a different, this notch is a different size for different brands but this is the same clip for my little two horsepower Honda and that was one of the missing pieces, so saved myself a little bit of money by repurposing the same kill cord for both motors. Um, here is your pull handle. Uh, you pull this to get the engine going. Um, here are, is where you would tighten it down onto your transom. You can see I'm missing one of these. Uh, one of the problems that I already fixed was this was seized. It was a little rusted. Now it moves nice and, and freely, but I do need to get a new clip for it. Um, that is actually in the mail right now. Here is your gear selector to go in reverse. You push back on it. This one is a little bit, little bit tough to work with. I think it needs some gear oil. And then middle is neutral. And then moving it forward, a little hard there, but that puts you into the forward gear. So unlike the little two horsepower that I had, which used a centrifugal clutch, this actually has forward and reverse gears. Um, now that about sums it up for oh, one last thing is going to be the choke down here um, You can see that this is where the uh, fuel line goes into and that part does need replaced So I have ordered that um, This is the the choke you pull this out and it'll allow more air and fuel into the carb this light is your oil fuel pressure light, I believe. So when it, this is running, this light should be illuminated. Um, so the big defect in this motor and the big unfortunate thing is right here. I believe this is called the anti-ventilation plate and it has been cracked or chipped off there. You can kind of see from a bird's eye angle there um, the problem. So a little bit unfortunate, but other than that, the motor looked like it was in good condition. A bit of an oil leak as well, but I think I know where that's coming from. And if not, I bought the parts needed to solve that problem. So without further ado, let's pull off the cowling and I'll show you what this engine looks like and kind of break it down. Um, so underneath here, there's a little lever. And on this lever, here, see if I can hold this for you guys. You want to uh, take this and I believe you just pull it downwards. Yeah, so down like that. And then the cowling is disengaged and you can just lift up. So here is what the engine looks like on the inside. Um, so I guess just starting where the fuel comes in. So the fuel is going to come in here through this. This is the fuel line that he was using. He had it hooked up. The previous owner had it hooked up directly to his, um, his, like out, his external fuel tank. This one does not have an internal fuel tank. And so I bought a quick connect replacement for this. That was actually the most expensive part that I bought for this engine. And that's just because Honda has their proprietary plugs. I could have used a different one, but I wasn't sure that it was gonna fit in this little groove that they have milled out for it. Um, so the fuel comes in here, goes through the fuel filter here, and then it goes into this. This is the fuel pump. From the fuel pump, it travels up through this little tube into the carburetor right here. This is the carburetor. Hopefully you guys can see, I know the lighting isn't perfect. From the carb, it goes into the engine and makes the magic happen. Now the engine will spin a shaft that goes down this right here. 
into this, which is the lower unit. And there are some more gears in here and some gear oil that you need to replace. And that'll spin the prop. Um, and I think that's about it. Right here is where your oil goes in. And um, one thing to note about this is that this bolt here that is really kind of rusted and grimy and gross, that is the oil drain bolt. So I've ordered a replacement for that because that one doesn't look like it's in great shape. But I think that's about it. So let me go over the parts that I've got to replace on this and like the minimum I need in order to get this in working condition and then some extra parts that I also wanted to buy. All right, guys, let me just go over some of the parts that I got for this motor. Um, I'm gonna start with the most obvious, the gas tank. Uh, needed an external gas tank for this. Bought this on Amazon. It was kind of expensive, like 50 or $60, which surprises me because it's just plastic. I don't know why it costs so much, but that was really the going rate and everything I found was in that price point. Other things that you really need is, are going to be your oil. Um, this is a four stroke motor, so it takes normal oil that you would use in any car. Then you're also gonna want gear oil. This is gonna be the, for that lower unit that I just showed you. Now, the next thing I need is how I'm going to get the fuel from the tank into my motor. And that is right here, my fuel line with that little primer bulb that you need in order to build up pressure to get the fuel into the engine. Um, this little piece here is um, compatible with Honda's a uh, little quick connect plug here and it'll screw in directly into the top of my fuel tank. Uh, the hose is about five or six feet, nothing too fancy. A little primer bulb to get that fuel up to the engine. And then these two were some of the most expensive pieces. These are the proprietary fuel connectors for Honda. They just go in like that and then you press this little top button, you depress this and it'll come right out. And this also has a little spring loaded uh, ball bearing in there to help prevent any fuel from leaking out. Um, and then this is what I'm going to replace on the motor so that uh, I'm not connecting straight into a fuel line like the previous owner was. But this little piece I think cost like 30 or $40 on its own, but this is a package cost like 70 ish. So, I just ended up buying the whole thing. In the description below, I will leave the place that I found all of the parts for this specific model. This is an 06 BF5. Um, so this was like the most expensive thing that I bought, but let me go over some smaller pieces that I also needed. All right, so in no particular order, I just have a box over here with everything I bought. Um, I got everything from Boat.net, and I think they've got reasonable prices, not great. Um, not everything, actually. This actually came from Amazon. This is generic fuel tubing. Um, the fuel line that was on the motor was looking a little bit uh, old, cracked, withered. So I'm going to replace all of it. I only needed about a foot, but this was sold in a 10-foot increment. And it actually came with 20 of these little clips, so I didn't have to buy that. This was about 10 bucks on Amazon. Link in the description. Next up, um, arguably the most popular thing to replace is the impeller. Um, I didn't get the OEM Honda one, half the cost. This was about $11. Um, I did get the OEM Honda spark plugs. Uh, not really sure what the part number is here, but again, everything will be, you can find in the blueprints linked below. So little spark plug, a couple bucks. This is the, this is a new drain bolt that I was talking about. This is the washer for that drain bolt. These are a couple of gaskets for the carb. They go on either side of this little um, like cushion. I'm not exactly sure what they called it, but for some reason it was in the blueprints, but it wasn't installed in this motor. So I'm thinking maybe the previous owner got rid of this, or maybe it didn't come with this when he bought it. Uh, nevertheless, it was a couple bucks. I picked it up and if it fits, I will put it on because it was in the blueprints, so I figured that must be how it works. Next up, um, in here, you can't really see it too well um, through this white packaging, but this is a new fuel filter. You'll see that later. A couple more gaskets. Don't exactly remember where these uh, go, but I believe I'm 99% sure these are for the water pump where the impeller is. Uh, since I will be taking that apart to replace this impeller, I will also be replacing the gaskets down there as well. 
This is a little bolt that was missing and it hooks in the, uh, this little bolt goes into this fuel connector right here to hold this in place. Just a little bolt. This is a little, um, it's like a rubber washer. It's a seal for the prop shaft down near the propeller. I know this when I was taking apart my Honda BF2 that it had one of these and it recommended replacing when it showed signs of wear. I haven't taken off the lower unit yet, so I don't know how good of condition it is in, but uh, picked up one of these anyways, just in case. A couple bucks, plus wanted to get my free shipping. And the last thing I have today is this. Um, this is the gasket for the oil drain pan. I noticed there was a little bit of oil collected uh, around the edge. I wasn't sure if maybe that was spilled or if this gasket was slowly leaking. Uh, taking this off would be a much larger process than any of these other upgrades I'm going to do. The rest of them are going to be very simple maintenance, but this one will take just a little bit more time and effort. So uh, probably won't do this initially, but if I see that it's leaking oil still after the maintenance I've done, then I'll want to replace this as well. But again, wanted that free shipping. Otherwise, it's like $15 and I don't want to buy it just one piece so I added it to the cart and I actually lied that wasn't the last thing I actually have uh, this I another um, shear pin for the prop and then this which is a little rivet to put on a new handle for the uh, just like uh, the transom bracket uh, bolt handle that I broke when uh, trying to fix to unseize that bolt and actually not listed here. I'm still waiting on two things that were kind of back ordered. So I'll get those later. One is going to be that handle for uh, this little rivet. Um, and then the other is a uh, cotter pin for uh, the propeller. So I'm still waiting on a couple things, but that's about all of the parts that I'm gonna replace and all the maintenance I'm gonna do. Um, just gonna try and make sure this thing is in as good as condition as possible. Get very familiar with the engine. That way, if anything goes wrong while I'm out on the water, I'll have a better understanding of what's wrong and maybe even fix it when I'm out there. But overall, um, it did need about $100 or so worth of parts and then some other things like the gas tank was kind of expensive. So uh, maybe another $200 to really get this thing actually moving in the water. I'm gonna get working on this motor. Um, I wanna take it out next weekend. So I got a, work, a lot of work to do in the next few days. Um, but I'll try and film a little bit of it. So enjoy the second half of this video and uh, I'm sure I'm going to be struggling quite a bit. All right, guys, I'm going to start down here on the lower unit. I think it'll be less work than the top. So I'm going to cross things, some things off early. Um, but anyways, I have this old bucket here and we're probably going to start by draining out the, um, the gear oil. Picked this guy up from Home Depot. It's a huge flathead screwdriver, an absolute necessity for working on these Honda outboards because as you can see here, the, uh, the oil um, bolts here and there's another one down here. They are flatheads, unfortunately. So I'm gonna take this out and uh, we'll drain this into this little bucket I have here for changing oil. Oh yeah, this needs changed. Look at that. Look at that, guys. It's just black ooze dripping out. Let me take out this one. All right, now we got the top one out. It's draining nicely, super thick. I will probably try and flush it through a couple times with some fresh oil. But um, for now, let's take off the prop. There's this cotter pin here and all right, once you have the color pin off, I think this unscrews somehow. All right, there we go. With a little help of an Allen key, we're able to get this guy off. Yep, and just like that, now the prop slides off. Here is the propeller, pretty standard. Um, honestly, pretty good shape. It's just gonna need to have some of this grime removed. Um, here you can see the shear pin fits in that groove. And then here is the shear pin. Might need to just go ahead and replace this. But in all honesty, it's still in decent condition. It definitely needs cleaned. 
Um, and then I can unscrew these to get into the lower unit and inspect the gears. All right, I actually changed my mind. I'm not gonna take this off. There was no water in this gear oil, so I know this is making a pretty good connection, so I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, leave this on. Um, it looks like I won't need to replace any of any of these parts. I'm just gonna clean this off and grease everything up before putting it back together. This hole right here that's labeled wash, they saw an adapter you can screw in here and hook up to a hose so you can run it without a bucket. Um, I don't have that adapter. I'm gonna be using a bucket because I'm a cheapskate. All right, now unless I'm mistaken, um, if you look underneath here, underneath the lower unit, or actually right here, you can see this line. That's where this is gonna separate and I'll be able to access um, the water impeller that I wanted to at least check on if I don't replace it. Um, but um, I wanna check on it before replacing the oil in here. Um, just, I don't know, before replacing all the prop and everything and greasing everything back together. I'm gonna go ahead and take this off and unless I'm mistaken, there's only two bolts. There's one right here. Can you guys see? Yeah, one right here and then on the other side, there's one right here. So I'm gonna take those off and see if it comes off. Let me see if uh, I'm missing anything because this thing's not coming off and... Okay, I, uh, I looked online and I found the um, like mechanics guide for changing. Um, it's like a Honda official guide for changing the impeller and I missed two steps. The first step is to put it, the gear in forward. Um, so I had it in neutral. And the second is I actually need to take off this cover right here and there should be, oh man, I can barely grab this. I'm gonna have to use the pliers to get that off, but there should be another bolt under here. So, oh, all right guys, got this off. It just has a little lip on there. You gotta pry it out. And this is what I needed to disconnect. This right here connects to the uh, shift selector. So I presume that'll be another 10 millimeter bolt. Yep, so we'll go ahead and unscrew that, get it disconnected, and we should be off to the races. And perfect, we got it all out. Awesome, we're gonna go ahead and wipe this guy down, get him a little cleaned up here, and we'll take a closer look. So here is the lower unit. I just have it in this little cardboard box for now. Um, but this right here is the water pump. I'm gonna have to take off four bolts, two here, two in the front here and I'll lift this up and we'll see what kind of condition the water pump's in. Got those four screws off, now this should lift up. Let's take a look at this impeller. And there's actually another piece that popped out. That was this right here. I believe it goes right in there. Just this little insert because there's actually an insert right here I believe, I think that goes there. Actually, no, there's already there's already an insert there. So, um, you know what, we just got an extra piece. That's all this is, it's an extra piece. Oh, it goes right in here. Um, yeah, you guys can see fairly well. This water pump's actually in decent condition. I will replace it, but it's not that bad. I'm gonna keep it as a backup, and uh, I'm pleasantly surprised by the condition of it. I think I wasn't supposed to take this out, so hopefully this fits back in. All right, now you guys can get a uh, better view of that impeller. Pretty good condition, not perfect, but pretty good nonetheless. Camera's about to die, so I'm gonna go switch out the battery. Oh, all right guys, we got our new impeller right here. Before we take it out of the packaging, let's line it up, make sure it's roughly the same size looks pretty close the correct the thing that you want to note is which direction these are spinning so these are uh, kind of pointed towards the clockwise direction so we'll want to make sure when we twist it in we twist it counterclockwise to match those um, like uh, spokes of the impeller I suppose is what those are called um, very important so we'll pop this one out, we'll clean it, and then we'll make sure it looks like this. It looks pretty clean in there, actually. Just have this, picked it up from O'Reilly's. It's like five bucks. Huge can, probably lasts me for forever. I know the water will probably rinse it off in time, but 
it'll definitely help it from burning up the first couple times that I use it at the very least. Now I see why some people will put a zip tie on this. You know what? Let me get the zip tie. Rotate it in the twist tie, whichever direction you want it to go. Tighten it down a bit more. And then we can just push it in. Whoops, don't want to get the zip tie caught. Wow, almost lost it there. But there we go. Oh, I should note, um, if you guys are going to replace gaskets, I recommend and I don't know if other people do this or if it's just what my dad taught me, but uh, open up your your gasket and just make sure it fits on. Um, because if you guys put the gasket on and it doesn't fit, like see this one? This one, uh, oh, it goes this way, that's why. Just make sure it, it lines up perfectly. Uh, that way you don't rip off a gasket and then you don't have anything to put on it and you can't even put it back together and test it, you know? So this one fits, so we'll rip off this guy. And um, in the schematic, there was actually two gaskets and a metal plate, so we'll see if there's two gaskets and a metal plate. If there's just this one, we'll put just the one back on there. Wow, and uh, I'm glad I took this off because underneath here, there's a bunch of sand. All right, so I cleaned it off a decent amount here. We're gonna go ahead and uh, place on this first gasket right here this metal plate like this it only goes on one way so it's pretty easy to get right then this one goes right on top whoops wrong way right on top this is nice and greased it's in the correct way and just goes on all right perfect now we'll put these four bolts back in and that'll be it for the impeller. All right, guys, now I'm gonna try and put the lower unit back on. Go ahead and take this lower unit, try and do our best to slide this on. All right, guys, finally got the lower unit back on. This thing was giving me a lot of trouble. You have to make sure that um, this is in all the way forward um, on this little lever here. And then also make sure that the lever selectors in all the way forward. That way you can access this little thing, this little uh, tightening bolt. I'm going to clean and grease the uh, propeller right here. So, all right, guys, just going to grease up everything, starting with this drive shaft. We're going to get this very greased because the propeller was really hard to get on and off. And we want to make sure that it it's buttery smooth on here. Going to drop our shear pin in and it's gonna fall right out because everything was greased up. Okay, should have seen that one coming. Greasing it all up, trying to get some a little deeper into the actual hole here. I'll actually use a little screwdriver, kind of spread that out inside. And there we go. All right, we'll take the new cotter pin and we'll put it in here. Now, the last thing to do is to replace, the last thing to do on this lower part is to replace the gear oil. All right, y'all, I went ahead and flushed this out a few times with some fresh gear oil. So now I will go ahead and the way that you fill up gear oil is from the bottom bolt. So you stick this in the bottom and you just squeeze until it fills up and you'll know when it fills up because it'll start coming out the top okay there it is once it starts coming out the top you know that it's full so you can go ahead and put the top one in to help um, prevent it from flowing as much kind of create that suction move out the old bottle or the, uh, the bottle of oil, and then put this one in the bottom. And now all we have to do is tighten it up, and that's all there is to changing the gear oil in an outboard, like any small outboard I think is the same way, so that's all there is to that. I think that's gonna wrap it up for tonight, and then tomorrow I'll work on some other parts. All right guys, today we are going to be taking off the 
carb and cleaning that. Probably will also get around to replacing the oil and um, the spark plug as well. So after that we'll be pretty much done and tomorrow we'll be able to test out the motor but for now let's get this carb off and see how it looks. All right, so hopefully you guys can see, um, there's just three bolts that you need to take off as well as these, um, these, t these fuel lines. There's uh, one here and then there's also, um, I'm not sure if this is a fuel or an air intake sort of line, but it's connected to the air intake. So you gotta take that off as well. So I probably need to grab some pliers to get these clips off. All right, got one off. I'm also going to be replacing this fuel line so I don't care too much if it gets all kind of all bent up and stuff since I do want to replace it perfect so that's off there now we just got to pull this one down this one I'm not replacing this one looks like it's might be an air intake um, or maybe like a fuel recycling sort of vent but anyways this bolt up top is a 10 millimeter you'll take that off and you don't need to take it all the way off you just need to be able to get this line out then these ones are eight millimeters. This one's kind of awkward at an awkward angle. Hopefully I can get to it. All right, guys, had to get a, uh, a different um, screwdriver, still that eight millimeter uh, socket. And I was able to reach this back, this bolt back here. Let me show you guys. Uh, it was quite a tight fit here, so my socket wrench was not fitting, but we were able to get that out. Now we're just going to unscrew the other one all the way. Now we will carefully take off the carb. Got to disconnect this. This is your throttle cable, and this is, I don't know, I think your air intake. Or no, this is the choke. So it's disconnected down here. Take out these bolts. Set these on the flywheel so you can lose them later. And there you go. There's your carb taken out. I'm gonna put this down on a uh, piece of cardboard and we'll clean it out really quick. But there you go. All right guys, hopefully you can see the carb here. This is the believe this is like the drain tube. We can just take this off. Um, I believe this is the drain screw. Just unscrew this when you want to drain it. Could be wrong on that account though. It's a little dirty, we'll clean that off. But the main thing to take this apart, two Phillips head screws right there. So we'll take those out. Yep, this pops right off. And there you go. Hopefully you guys can see that all right. Lighting's not great, actually. I'm gonna set you guys up on the other side so you can see better. All right, so hopefully the lighting's a little bit better over here. You guys can see this is the float. This is the jet. We're gonna wanna take this out. Someone on YouTube said you should spray this with WD-40 for a couple minutes before you take it out. Just let it kind of soak in so we're gonna do that um, in the meantime we can clean this out there's a little bit of gunk in there maybe you can tell not too much it's pretty clean but we have some carb cleaner here so we'll spray this out and get it cleaned up I should probably wear gloves for this huh I'll, I'll wear gloves on this part all right guys I know it's not ideal here but now I've got a better angle, so here's what's important. This um, little jet in the center is actually a screw, and if you look closely, you can actually see some indents where a flathead screwdriver will fit. So I'm going to take the flathead that matches up as close as possible with those little indents and unscrew it. Now, this is made of brass, so it's pretty soft, so just be careful not to strip it. And there you go. 
now it's out just going to uh, take a little needle or something and uh, probably also spray some carb cleaner through that little jet hole make sure it's nice and clean and then there's also there's also another jet in here I'm having a hard time getting that out I might take a little needle or something and try and wiggle it from the inside Alright, finally was able to get this out. It actually sticks up into whoops this chamber here. So it actually sticks up a little bit into there, so I was able to uh to push it down a little bit and start getting it moving and then kind of just tap it on the table um to get the rest out. The tripod is falling down now. Alright, so we're also gonna clean this out. The carb in this looks really, really clean actually. Um, I was pleasantly surprised. We'll see if... Nope, this is a little bit too big. Let me try something smaller to clean that out. All right, we're just gonna use one of the bristles here on a, uh, a wire brush. Hopefully you guys can see, but we're just gonna go ahead and stick it through all the way make sure it's nice and clean nothing in there that would impede flow looks like this was surfaced much earlier than the <laughs> the lower part of the outboard that I was doing yesterday um, same thing here this one is definitely clean too so all good on the carb actually guys we're just gonna spray that with some carb cleaner oh and this is the uh, float just really need to make sure that uh, that it works so this is the float we're just going to WD-40 this little hinge here and clean everything else out and put this guy back on because it looks pretty good all right so putting things back this thing goes with the nozzle see this is a wider gap the nozzle goes right down here like so whoops There we go, and we'll just push this down until it's all the way down there, perfect. Then this will go back in. Very gently, as to not strip it at all, or cross thread it, or anything. And then just a nice little snug tightening here. Not too tight at all, because you gotta take this apart again eventually. All right, now we'll just WD-40 up the hinges a little bit. Work it in, dab off the extra. It's okay if a little bit of oil gets in your gas. It's not the end of the world, it'll just smoke a little bit. There we go. Now back on with the housing. I believe it only goes on one way. Just kidding. Looks like it goes on a couple of different ways. Well, no, not quite. Anyways, I think this is the correct way. We'll find out as soon as we try to put it back on. All right, now we're just gonna screw these guys back in. Now just this little drain again or whatever this was, and you're done. Worst come to worst, I put the pan on backwards and I'll have to switch it, but I think, I think that's correct. Could be wrong, I'll find out as soon as I put it on the motor. <clears throat> now I just pulled this off. This is the air intake, it's getting a little grimy. I'm just gonna clean this off while I got everything out here. I can probably just spray this out with some carb cleaner. All right, the next thing I wanna do while I have the carb off is actually going to be replacing these fuel lines. This one from the fuel pump to the carb, and then also this fuel line that goes to the gas tank up here and installing the new fuel connector right here. So 
I will go ahead and start here and then kind of work my way back. All right, guys, this is what I'm going to be replacing it from. This is just a uh, generic uh, fuel line from Amazon. And I'm uh, just going to make sure that it fits. And then I'm going to cut them up down to size. As I uh, take one off, I'll replace it with a new piece of hose. So just took off this section right here. I'll cut out a new size. Just got to make sure it fits. Oh, yeah, that'll be perfect. And then uh, we'll put it back on. And it came with these clips as well. So I'll be putting these clips on. All right, guys, just got this lower piece off. It's actually a little bit of fuel in it. I can smell it. But I'm also going to be replacing this fuel filter. So there's actually this kind of rubber housing for it that I'm going to take off and put on the uh, new fuel filter that I bought. So let me grab that really quick. All right, guys, here is the new new fuel filter. As you can see, a spitting image of the last one, but much cleaner, much nicer. Don't want anything bad in this engine after all the work that I put on. Um, this was like 10 bucks, seven, eight, I don't know, something like that. Um, so anyways, I'm gonna cut a new length for this and a new length for this and put it on here. We have the, um, we're gonna have it attached here, come down here, this is the fuel filter, I'm gonna tuck it in down there, and then the fuel line's gonna come up this way, and then I just pulled it out through this front hole where this fits in right like that. So we're just gonna hook it up now, and then we'll put, thread it back in, and it'll be nice and easy that way. All right, guys, this is as far as I could get it on. I think this piece right here was actually intended for a different sized hose. Um, I wasn't actually sure if this piece fit this model exactly, but it looks like it does. You know, it's very close to fitting perfectly. Maybe it's not an identical fit and maybe it's from a different model. So uh, maybe that model has slightly larger diameter hose. I squeezed this on there the best I could I don't think it's going anywhere and when I take it off, I'm probably going to have to cut it off next time. So um, unfortunately, this piece maybe didn't fit perfectly, but I think this is good enough for now. All right, we were able to get this installed pretty easily. Um, one thing to note is there's this little clip in there. Oh man, I don't think you guys can see too well, but there's a clip in here right behind uh, this little like metal aligner. Um, that you have to clip the fuel line into. And then there's also one right here that you clip it into. Um, and then it just runs back here, I believe. Um, there's like a little indent there. Maybe that's for like tucking it into the side or something, but I don't think that's necessary. So I'm just gonna leave it up here. And then we got all the clips on and it's going up here. And the last thing to do is to put on this carb. So, Let's put it back on. There's also, we're gonna replace these gaskets here. So we gotta take off this one. This one is uh, all in ruins. It's pretty much uh, falling apart. It's barely, yeah, it's barely there. Yep, there comes a piece. So I'll get that off and we'll put on the new ones. All right guys, so these are the new gaskets right here. Um, there's two of them and there's also a spacer. Um, and these go just right on here and uh, the, uh, the previous owner didn't have a spacer in here, but the schematic showed that it had one, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it in and uh, we'll see. Uh, so anyways, next thing to do is to, I, I also, um, I cleaned off the old gasket here, just very carefully scraped it off with a knife, um, trying to get as few shavings in here as I could. A good trick is to put like a paper towel in here that way nothing falls down into your cylinder head. But um, anyways, just going to now attach, uh, put back on the carb and reattach everything. Before you put the carb back on, install these two, the, the throttle and the choke, guys. Rookie mistake, y'all. I can't even find my where is it, here it is. All right, guys, I think the carb is pretty much installed. I just have the last thing to do is connect this fuel line up right here. That's pretty much it. Actually, one last thing to connect. 
the little drain tube here. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the carb. Next thing is a pretty simple one. We're gonna do the spark plugs. So really quickly, let's move on to that. Sorry about the noise, guys. My roommate is doing laundry and this is where we keep our laundry machine. So no complaints there, but uh, that's just where the noise is coming from. We're gonna use the spark plug thing. Take off the spark plug, which is right down here. And it actually looks like this will not fit. I am going to have to use a different wrench. Here you can see on the new spark plug, it's actually a much larger wrench. All right guys, it actually looks like uh, I have no wrenches that'll fit this spark plug, which is a bit of a shock to me, but I guess I need to go to the store and get more wrenches. I don't know guys, I guess, I guess I need more than a $30 or $40 Harbor Freight toolkit to get this job done, unfortunately. So, uh, gonna have to hold off on the spark plug for today. I'll do that tomorrow. <sighs> All right guys, now I wanna change out this oil drain plug bolt. So, it's right down there and just gotta set this to loose. Oh, I need a smaller size. All right guys, found one that should fit a little bit more snug. Yep, there we go. Now, oh, now I'll put this you gotta be kidding me. I just broke my tool, y'all. Look at that. That is so sad. Alright. Alright guys, welcome back to day three of this two-day build. Um, we had some catastrophic failure, so I picked up a new adapter today. So let's see if this 3 8 quarter inch can hold up just enough to get this drain bolt undone. <sighs> Fingers crossed. Also picked up an adapter for the spark plug. Hopefully it fits. Actually, let's check right now. All right, guys. So here is the spark plug. Has another little cover there. And this goes on and it does not fit man I don't know what this is a uh, 18 mil spark plug socket bigger than the other spark plug socket I have which is the this one right here 3 8 so definitely a bigger size but um, unfortunately it looks like Hopefully you guys can tell. Definitely a bigger size, but still not big enough. Um, let me grab the spark plug really quick. Show you guys that. All right, y'all, so here is the spark plug. Just set it down like that, and as you can see, yeah, so as you guys can see, there's no way this adapter is gonna fit over the spark plug, unfortunately. So we're going back to the store, which closes in about 30 minutes, but let's see quickly if this adapter can hold up. Gosh, guys. All right, check this out. All right, guys, check this out. Not sure if you can see, but I've actually split the socket. This is unbelievable. It's deformed now there's a uh, you can see it there it's quite deformed it's a big crack in it okay we'll try the metric version we're also gonna take this extender off I think it's uh, giving me less leverage and I think this won't get stuck on anything all right here we go Again, guys, look at that. Again, I've cracked it. Right there. Can you guys see? Right there. All right, so we just cracked two of these guys trying to get this thing off. Man, 
What is it gonna take? Back to the store. Oh, all right guys, we are back. We just picked up this and it oh, should work perfectly. Man. All right, time to time to see if it works. Give you guys just a little bit of a better angle there. I know this is not ideal, but look, this isn't ideal for me either. All right. Oh. We did it. We got it free. Oh man, this has been an absolute journey. All right, let's set up the oil pan. All right, there we go. Got it out. It's a little rusted. Honestly, it doesn't look too bad, but I am gonna replace this because I feel like it wasn't making a great seal. The washer actually looks pretty good intact, but again, I don't know. I'm just gonna replace it for the sake of replacing it. Obviously keep this one as a spare, but now we just let this drain out. These outboards don't take much oil at all, so. This shouldn't take too long. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing here, but just drain it out into a, uh, into one of these little, or into one of these Gatorade bottles. All right, I'm just gonna hold it at an angle here so it drains out a little bit better, a little more completely. Oh, and then actually we can go ahead and take off the, uh, the oil cap here. That'll release the uh, suction, help it drain completely. And you know what, since it was pretty grimy, I think I'm going to flush it with some fresh oil. Just because, why not? Alright guys, now that we have flushed it out, I just flushed it out with like a half cup or so of, uh, of fresh oil here. Just to see, make sure if there was any residue, it would kind of flow out. I didn't see anything, the oil looked pretty clean. So I think this oil just needed to be changed um, and... Really nothing too, too bad there. But um, first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna reinstall the new bolt and washer. Um, I ended up getting a new one because, well, if you take a look at this one here, I'll show you really quick. Don't wanna grab it with my bare hands, but uh, it's quite rusted on top. And um, the bolt itself actually looked like it was in really good condition, but the top was pretty rusted and uh, I just wanted to replace it, so here is the new one. We'll go ahead and just put the washer on it. There's a, uh, there's like a flat side and like a rounded side. Man, do you guys know if it matters which side touches the bolt and which side touches the, the oil pan? I'm inclined to think the uh, smooths, the smoother side should touch the oil pan and that flat side should touch the bolt. I don't know. I don't think it matters though, because you just tighten it down and you're gonna compress it just a little bit there. So I'm not sure which one matters, but that's what we're going with. We're just gonna go ahead and screw this in hand tight for now. And then we'll just tighten it up with the wrench here. Not too tight. Um, I'm sure there's I'm sure there's a torque in Honda's uh, guidebook. I have no idea what it would be. And then I'm not actually sure how much oil it calls for. Not too much, definitely. Um, just based on how much came out. Let's see, a little bit more than this much. I don't know, 25 ounces or so, 26. I'm sure it says, it says somewhere, but here I'll show you guys. The dipstick has this little indicator. It's a, it's a dipstick, it tells you how much oil you have. So I'm just gonna fill it up and use the dipstick. But first, I'm gonna go ahead and clean out some of the uh, the used oil around the threads here and make sure these are, or just clean everything up around here. Make sure there's as little used oil as possible getting in there. Of course you won't be able to get all of it, but you'll be able to get most of it. And we'll go ahead and fill her up. To, uh, to check the oil level, just clean off the dipstick so there's no oil on it. Then put it in and tighten it all the way down and then loosen it back up. Take a look at it. Oil is not even to the bottom of the dipstick. If any is registered. All right, so there you can see, just hopefully you guys can see, 
just right there on the bottom quarter there's a little bit of oil but definitely we're gonna need more so let's crack open the bigger jar all right the uh, the other oil I have is the exact same one just castrol mother oil actually this one's GTX that one's edge probably doesn't make a big difference but uh, just poured some into this bottle so that uh, it's easier to lift than a, a five quart and let me make sure that you guys can see can y'all see that the oil is now at the top of the dipstick I actually got it perfect man hopefully you guys can see you can kind of see the oil pull up there at the bottom that that's actually a little bit better let me do it again here and see if you guys can see better without without the paper towel all right so can you guys see it's right at the top so that's perfect it'll also get worked around a little bit in the uh, in the engine so it'll probably go down just slightly just ever so slightly we're just gonna snug this up nice and tight now moving on to the spark plug so the spark plug is covered with the uh, spark plug cap now we're just gonna take out the spark plug we got this 13 16 inch deep socket for it and look at that it finally fits we did something right today all right so we will go yes counterclockwise to loosen this guy up and as suspected not in very tight you don't want to tighten spark plugs too much but let's take a look at it and see how it looks okay well if I was going to put that back in, I'd definitely try and brush it off a little bit. It's looking a little grimy. Hopefully you guys can tell there. Yeah, just a little grimy. I know it's not perfectly in focus, but there it is. Let's take a look at the new one. All right, here's the new one I ordered. Oops, there we go. It looks roughly the same, slightly different, but pretty much the same. Hopefully you guys can see. Um, I did notice that the uh, this little housing, for some reason, um, it didn't fit with this normal spark plug like attachment here. You had to unscrew it and then it would fit in. So a little bit weird there. I'll leave it on right now just in case I damage the threads or something. But we'll screw this guy back in. And uh, I think sometimes they say you're supposed to put a little bit of oil in the engine if it has been sitting for a while um, through the spark plug hole. I'm not gonna do that. Maybe you guys can let me know in the comment, comments if, if that is a thing that people do. But I am just gonna go ahead and screw this guy back in. Just get this down hand tight. And then we'll give it, I think on new spark plug, you're supposed to give it like half a turn with the with a wrench. And then if you're gonna reuse a spark plug, like a quarter turn, because I don't know if you guys can see there's a washer Hopefully you guys can see there's a washer right here on this spark plug. You might have been able to see it on the uh, the new one. It was it was loose. It wasn't pressed down like this. Oh here, um, but in there this is actually it compresses. So you see those that line in the middle. That's where the uh, washer has compressed a little bit to give it a better seal. Anyways, we will go ahead now and tighten this guy up just a little bit. Give it a half turn here. And that's about good. All right. Now, unless I'm mistaken, it looks like this thing will not accept this uh, adapter, so I'm gonna have to unscrew it. There's this little rubber cover here as well that kind of sits down on the spark plug. And then you press this on and that'll keep it water tight hopefully at least that's you know the idea anyways yeah that's all there is to it now the spark plug is done and i think that about does it for the engine maintenance for now um next thing is just going to be uh just one last thing actually i think so let me get things cleaned up and move on to the final step Alright guys, this is it. This is the last part of the project. 
it's just this little quick connect then we'll be done with maintenance probably for another year or so um, this screws in here so that I can easily quick connect this hose and I did need one thing before I could do that or I would have already done it and that's just a little bit of Teflon tape so just gonna go ahead and give this guy oh I'm supposed to go yes with the the turn I believe all right this guy just needed like two or three wraps I think now it's good all right we got the Teflon tape on there let's go ahead and start screwing this guy in being a little careful not to cross thread anything here since it is plastic oh, I'm tired of walking back and forth to my toolbox so one of these is bound to fit there we go last one There we go, nice and snug. Go ahead and hook this guy up. Perfect, look at that. All right guys, let me show you how it's all coming together. We got the gas tank, it's got no gas in it right now, but there will be. This nice quick connect right onto the gas tank, boom. Right, my hose, about six feet or so of hose, and that's gonna be running from the front or middle of my boat right here into the motor. Got our primer bulb here, bop, bop, bop. All right, now we just need to put some gas in her, clean her all up. I'm gonna do one final wipe down of everything, try and get as much dirt and grime off as I can. And then we're gonna start her up, but I think I'm gonna save starting up for tomorrow in the daylight. Just to get some better footage for you guys since I gotta open the garage and everything and it's getting kinda late anyway, so. Man, thanks for watching, y'all. I hope you learned a lot here, and fingers crossed that it starts tomorrow. starts right up guys right up Honda reliability all right y'all like I was saying the motor's running perfectly right now it's running perfectly um, I'm not sure what the idle supposed to sound like right now it feels like it's it's just like it's a little clunky it's it's going kunk 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 right so uh, I think I probably just need to get some hours on it get some revs clean out some of the old deposits that have been in there for a couple years now but after two years of not starting this motor, according to the uh, previous owner, hasn't been starting in about one to two years. Made a few a few adjustments here, just changed the oils, uh, and it started right up. I couldn't be any happier with this motor. So uh, I'm probably gonna let it run for another 10 minutes or so here on idle, and uh, we'll wrap up this video. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys are able to uh, fix your own outboards or you know, find some cheaper outboards and feel confident uh, buying from Craigslist or from a third party um, and just feeling confident doing these changes yourself. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm just gonna play around with the motor a little bit. All right guys, I just realized uh, I never pushed the choke back in. So let's give it another, uh, another go here. We'll start it up and uh, we'll push the clutch in and we'll see how it runs. All right guys, there's a wrap. Motor's running. Hopefully uh, this weekend we can get it out in the water and see how it does.
I'm gonna mess around with the idle speed a little bit, but uh, to mess around with the idle speed, all you need to do is adjust this uh, screw right here, tighter or looser, just kind of play around with it. So I'm gonna do that until I get it right, but otherwise, thanks for watching, y'all.